Today we're going to be talking about what is the atomic theory, pages 629 to 635 in our book. From the time of Democritus, scientists have studied matter and proposed theories about it. What do we now think about what makes up matter? Suppose you could break a silver chain into smaller and smaller pieces. The pieces would become so small that you couldn't see them without a microscope. How small could the pieces get before they were no longer silver? The answer, one silver atom. An atom is the smallest unit of an element that maintains the properties of that element. The atomic theory is a scientific explanation of the structures of atoms and how they interact with other atoms. Democritus first suggested that the smallest part of matter is an atom. Over the years, theories that scientists made about atoms have changed as scientists learn more and more about atoms. More than 2,000 years ago, I stated that all matter is made up of tiny solid balls called atoms. The word atom means invisible. Current atomic theory states that an atom is mostly empty space. At its center, there is a small, dense core called the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by electrons. Proton. A proton is a positively charged particle found in the nucleus of an atom. Neutron. Neutrons are also particles found in the nucleus, but a neutron has no charge. Electron. Electrons are negatively charged particles that speed through an area around the nucleus called an electron cloud. Draw an arrow pointing to a single gold atom. So down here at the bottom, you see the pop out circle of all of those atoms. Draw an arrow to just one of those teeny tiny dots, and that's a gold atom. Now using the Venn diagram to compare and contrast electrons and protons. So protons have a positive charge. So under proton, write positive charge. An electron, under just electron, write negative charge. Electrons have a negative charge. And both are found in the nucleus. So where it says both, write nucleus. It's elementary. Copper, oxygen, and mercury have one thing in common. They are all elements. Exactly what is an element? There are many kinds of matter. An element is a type of matter that is just one kind of atom. All atoms of elements have the same number of protons. For example, boron is an element. Every atom of boron consists of exactly five protons. No other element has atoms with exactly five protons. What's so special about protons? Electrons are far from the nucleus, so they can be gained or lost. Also, different atoms of the same element can contain different numbers of neutrons. Protons always stay the same. In the mid-1800s, I organized all known elements by their properties in increasing mass. Scientists still use organized elements based on my work. Neon, 10 protons. Uses, neon signs, helium, neon lasers, television tubes, and refrigerant. Mercury, 80 protons. Uses, laboratory instruments, thermostats, dental fillings, and pesticides. All right, so we are looking at the periodic table of elements, and there, there are more than 100 elements in total, and each block is going to represent one element. So the very first block that we see on the top left-hand side is hydrogen, and you see that it has the number one up in the top left corner. That is called the atomic number. So the atomic number is what we see up in that top corner, so hydrogen has one. As we look through here, we can notice that all of them start with a capital letter, have a second letter, um, or even a third letter that will be lowercase. So every element has either a single uppercase letter or two, where only one is uppercase, or three, where the first one is uppercase. So we know that it's an element when we see an uppercase letter. And the elements 
that are listed here can be found in their absolute pure form out in nature. Now, not everything is found here on Earth, however. Elements are substances that can't be broken into simpler substances. Chlorine, proton 17, uses disinfecting water, making paper, paints, plastics, and dyes. Silver, protons 47, uses jewelry, silverware, photography, welding, mirrors. Copper, protons 29, uses plumbing, coins, electrical wires, making brass and bronze. At the bottom there, it says draw and label a carbon atom. So as we look at each one of these pictures that we've seen so far, for instance, chlorine up at the top there, there is a thing in the middle and that's the nucleus. And then around it, those 17 protons are drawn going around the outside of it. So for silver, we've got our nucleus and then we have 47 protons drawn going around it. And notice how those protons have these little tails on them. That's just showing that they are, have energy and that they're moving around. So this is one way to draw it. So down at the bottom, I started by drawing my nucleus and the outside. And it says, draw and label a carbon atom. Use the information provided to draw and label a carbon atom. Well, really, we're only looking at the protons. So the protons here is six. So inside this picture, you need to draw six little um, tiny streaks and they have theirs in blue, but you can just do it in pencil, going around the nucleus. So don't put them all in one blob, separate them pretty evenly. Putting it all together, there are more than 100 elements, but you can see that there are many more types of matter than that. What are those other types? Many atoms go through chemical change with a different type of atom and form molecules. A molecule is made up of two or more atoms joining together chemically. A compound is a substance formed by atoms from two or more elements. The properties of a compound are very different from the properties of the element that form it. For example, atoms of carbon and oxygen will react, forming the compound carbon dioxide. This compound has its own properties that are different from those of just plain carbon or just plain oxygen. Part of my atomic theory stated that different types of atoms combine to form chemical compounds. So down at the very bottom of page 634, we can see that these things, they kind of look like um, gumballs, and there's two blue ones, and it says hydrogen atoms plus a single red oxygen atom, and notice they have combined together in a clump, and that's what makes water. So hydrogen is completely different than water, although it is part of what goes into the water. Then the next one, we've got sodium atoms plus chlorine atoms, and when those come together, they make salt. By themselves, if you just ate chlorine, you would be poisoning yourself. But somehow when the atoms combine chemically, it makes it a safe substance for us to ingest. Compounds are made of atoms of at least two different elements. Firework colors, orange, yellow, red. Orange is calcium chloride, made up of one calcium and two chloride for every atom. Yellow is sodium nitrate, made up of one sodium, one nitrogen, and three oxygen for every atom. And red is lithium carbonate, two lithium, one carbon, and three oxygen. Some of the colors in fireworks come from compounds. For example, calcium chloride, which contains one calcium atom for every two chlorine atoms, results in an orange color. Fructose is often called fruit sugar. For every six atoms of carbon in the compound, there are 12 hydrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms. Do the math. So on this page, it asks you to do the math. So off to the side, do the math. I have started off and it says that they want you to put it in the lowest terms. So in total, there are six carbon, 12 hydrogen, and six oxygen. I'm going to add those together to get my denominator of 24. So my carbon atoms, there are six out of the 24 atoms are carbon. Hydrogen atoms, 12 out of 24 are hydrogen. And oxygen atoms, six out of 24 are oxygen. But we need to simplify those or put them in lowest terms. So the largest number that can divide into both 6 and 24 
is 6. So 6 divides into 6 one time and 6 divides into 24 four times. So for carbon atoms, our lowest term is going to be 1 fourth, 1 fourth. So write that down next to number 1. Number 2, hydrogen atoms. We've got 12 20 fourths, and the largest number that can divide into both of them is 12. So 12 divides into 12 one time, 12 divides into 24 two times. So hydrogen atoms, our lowest term is 1 half. And finally, oxygen atoms is the same answer that we had for carbon atoms, 6 24 so We divide them both by 6 and get 1 fourth for oxygen atoms. All right, so this is some mighty heavy stuff that we were talking about today. When you get up to the high school, you will spend an entire year learning about chemistry. This was just a one day quick hit, but you will at some point learn the periodic table, how to read it, how to put it all together, and what all of those numbers mean. Yes, this is complex, but that's why you're gonna be doing it for a whole year when you're in high school. All right, thanks for uh, learning today, and I'll talk to you guys later.